Mr. Invento, I was just doing some shopping when I saw you standing over here on the corner. Eh? I am sorry, miss, but uh, I think you have mistaken me for someone that you know or something like that. What, Mr. Invento? It's me, Miss Carolyn. Eh? We've known each other for years and years. We're friends, remember? Oh, yeah, well, I am sure you are a very nice person. (laughs) Uh, But I assure you that we have never met. Now, if you will excuse me... Well, I never... I know scientists are supposed to be absent-minded, but this is ridiculous. I wonder if Mr. Invento hit himself on the head while he was working on one of his experiments and has forgotten who he is. He doesn't recognize any of his friends. Wait a minute. I see the giant blueberry stopping to talk with him across the street. Surely Mr. Invento can't forget the blueberry. (laughs) Nobody can forget that character. I'll just see what happens. Let go of mine arm! Get away from me, you blue monstrosity! Okay, Mr. Invento. I don't believe it. He started hitting the poor blueberry with his cane. I better see if he's okay. Hey, blueberry, are you hurt? Are you okay? Ouch, ouch. Ooh, yeah, I think so, Miss Carolyn. Just a little stun from Mr. Invento rapping me on the head with his cane. Ooh, I didn't do anything to him either. I know. Mm. He's acting very strange. I think we'd better drop over to his house today and yeah. see what's bothering him. Okay. Mr. Invento is one of a kind, that's for sure. Yeah. My mother and father have great plans for me. They want me to be all that there is to be. My mother wants goodness and fame for a start. My father wants money and strength for his part. And that is my problem, to make dreams come true. I know I can't do it. One of me is too few. For they want me to play piano, flute, and maybe violin. I should also learn to be a sport, but always try to win. I should be a straight-A student and spend all my time on school. I should learn about machines and things and not grow up a fool. I should want to be a doctor, lawyer, and a teacher, too. So many things they want for me, I don't know what to do. I should want to learn to dance and sing and have a TV show. Do everything there is to do while there's still time to grow. I should play tennis, baseball, football, be well-rounded in all ways. I should want to join the circus just to spend some carefree days. I should want to make them very proud and happy as can be. But I don't know how to tell them that there's only one of me. We'll return for more Kids Radio Show in a moment. I like me, yes I like me, being what only I can be, I like me. I sometimes laugh, sometimes cry, sometimes sing, sometimes sigh, sometimes gentle, sometimes tough, sometimes soft, sometimes rough. Do you like you? Do you? like you doing what only you can do do you like you do you sometimes laugh sometimes cry sometimes sing sometimes sigh sometimes gentle sometimes tough sometimes soft sometimes rough we like us we like us Doing the things that make us us We like us 
we sometimes laugh, sometimes cry, sometimes sing, sometimes sigh, we're sometimes gentle, sometimes tough, sometimes soft, sometimes rough. I like me, yes I like me, being what only I can be, yes I like me. Miss Carolyn and the giant blueberry. What a pleasant surprise that you have come for a little visit with me. <laughs> huh? You mean you know us now? <laughs> and you're not going to hit me with your cane? Yeah, you put a few bumps on the poor blueberry earlier. Oh, what are you talking about? You know that I would never strike the giant blueberry. <laughs> he is my friend, just like you are. That's what I thought until I saw you this morning on the street, and you acted like you didn't even know me. Yeah, and you started using me for batting practice when all I did was say hello to you. Right, I saw that happen too. <laughs> oh, you two are playing a little joke on me, eh? Yeah, so? that is what I like about you two. Such a crazy sense of humor. <laughs> I know you are joking because I have not even been out of my house all morning. Now you're playing a joke on us because we both saw you and talked with you. Yeah, and these are real bumps on my body that you put there with your cane. That was you, all right, unless you have a twin brother we don't know about. Nine, nine. I am an only child. I have no twin breath. Oh, no. Oh, wait a minute. You say this person looked just like me and talk like me? Yes, of course. And it was you. Oh, I could do Lieber. I hope he hasn't escaped. I must check my laboratory at once. Why? What was in your laboratory? <laughs> wow. Look at all the scientific stuff he keeps in here, Miss Carolyn. What are you working on in this lab, Mr. Invento? Oh, he is gone. He broke out of his cage. Ooh. Oh, this is terrible. Quick, uh, tell me what I was wearing when you saw me on the street. Quick. Oh, let's see. Uh, you had on a white lab coat buttoned all the way up. And, uh, and a cane. Don't forget that. Jeez. Right. And a cane. And uh, old tennis shoes, I think. Oh, no. Oh, I had my notebook in the pocket of that lab coat. Oh, he will see the notes I have taken on him. And it also has the addresses of people I know in there. Oh, Who no. are you talking about? Oh, Who? Oh, oh Miss Carolyn, uh, 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 what you met on the street today was not me. It was a clone of me. A clone? You mean there's a second you? <laughs> I don't think the world is ready for this. That's an understatement. Oh, I just thought that having two heads would be better than one head, you know. So I cloned a replica of me. the bricks I'll make the wall together we can build a house ten feet tall you get the cloth I'll get the thread together we'll make dresses that'll turn their heads because two heads are better than one for doing it two heads are better than one for doing it two heads are better than one cause they make work like fun One, two, together we can make this place clean as new. You pick the tune, I'll pick the key. Together we can write a song in harmony. Get up, bro. 
brush I'll get one too Together we can paint a pretty sky of blue You get the boat I'll get the oars Together we can row away to far off shores Because two ends are better than one for doing it Two ends are better than one for doing it Two ends are better than one Cause they ain't worth my fun Everything is better when you do it together Miss Carolyn, if there are two Mr. Inventos running around, oh, how come he hit me with his cane? Yeah, good question. Oh, oh that, is, that is the way Schnitzel behaves. I never intended for him to go out into the public yet. He is still too mean. How did you create a clone of yourself anyway, Mr. Invento? Oh, it was not that hard. Uh, I took a view of mine skin cells that I scraped off my nose. Yeah. Oh, and then yeah. I put some in my growth accelerator that I created. Yeah. All of the genetic information that was needed to create another me was right there in the DNA of mine cells. Hmm. I accelerated the the growth of the splitting of the cells until I had an exact replica of me, a clone. You said DNA? Uh, yeah, uh, that's short for dioxyribose nucleic acid. What? Since when do you know words like that, Blueberry? Well, I subscribe to the magazine Scientific Blueberry. The what? We must stop this small talk and find mine clone, Schnitzel. Oh, oh! I should have never used myself for this experiment. He could ruin me if he does something stupid. Why did you ever do such a thing? Oh, I asked myself, if I am going to start cloning around, uh -huh. why not pick a person that is a shining example of the human race? Uh, one who the world would use more than one of, you know. They could use more than one of me. Oh, and the, brother. And the obvious answer was me. I'm not sure I follow your thinking. Well, let me put it another way, then. Uh, I thought that if I could be anybody I wanted to be, I'd be me. Wouldn't wanna be a movie star and get mobbed wherever I went. I don't need to be on TV, I don't have the temperament to be seen by lots of people, to have my name on the avenue, to be famous, to be recognized, but known by very few. Oh, happiness, I found the key, if I could be somebody, I'd be me. Wouldn't want to be your father, though he's influenced me a lot. I wouldn't want to be the president, I got something he ain't got. And I don't need my records, and I don't need my books, and I don't need my three guitars on my genuine good looks. Our oh, happiness, I found the key, if I could be somebody, I'd be me. Wouldn't be David Slavitt, though I really like his poems. I wouldn't be Dr. Shockley, I don't got the right chromosomes. You look very pretty, but I am not afraid to 
Cause although I like your face I wouldn't want to trade Oh, happiness, I found the key If I could be somebody, I'd be me Limousine. I don't need no private plane. I'm happy being who I am. I wouldn't even be John Wayne. Although I love his movies, and love the lines he said. They sound better coming from him. Besides, he's dead. Oh, happiness. I found the key. If I could be somebody, I'd be me. Lots of people live their lives just waiting for a chance To be something that they're not For money, fame, romance People always tell me one day I'll be a star But I say stars burn out one day even if they're popular Oh, happiness, I found the key If I could be somebody, I'd be me One thing I gotta tell you, it's the key to what I got. And that one thing is, I like yourself a lot. And while I'm on the subject, if you want to be happy and free, the only advice I can give you is, uh, be me. Oh, happiness, I found the key. If I could be somebody, I'd be me. So you see, I'd be me. Just add one more to it. <laughs> But why is your clone Schnitzel acting so mean? Well, uh, I have not had the time to teach him how to act around other people yet. And he really has no concept of right or wrong yet. He, uh, we were going to get to that sort of stuff eventually. Oh, you know? great. You know that you'll be blamed for whatever Schnitzel might do? <laughs> hey, that's right. Uh, should I hit Mr. Invento back for what his clone did to me? No, Blueberry. But we have to find that clone. You seem concerned that the clone had your notebook. What was in that that he might read? Ooh, notes of mine clone experiment on addresses of people I know. Then he might start looking up some of those people right away. Yo. We better start tracking down your friends right now. Yo. Meanwhile, in a very elegant restaurant in another part of town... Mr. Invento's clone has visited Carmen Gigantica because he saw her address written in Invento's notebook. In a strange fit of behavior, the clone has invited Carmen to dinner. Oh, Mr. Invento, this is a muy bonita restaurant. I am so surprised at you. You have never asked little Carmen to come to dinner with you before. Well, that is because I have never really seen you before. Never seen me before? No. Oh, you are such a keeder, Mr. Invinto. What is a keeder? Is that something on the menu? Now I know you are flirting with Carmen by being a funny boy. I like you very much when you are in this mood, I think. Well, uh, I don't like me at all. You don't like you? Right. But you must. It, it is... Oh, so confusing. Uh, I get angry because I feel only half here all the time. Uh, I don't like me at all. I don't like me. I don't like me because I... I don't like me. I don't like me because I... I don't like me because I I don't like me because I I don't like me I don't like me because I I don't like me I don't like me because I I don't like me because I I don't like me because I 
I don't like me. I don't like me because I. I don't like me. I don't like me because I. I don't like me because I. I don't like me because I. We'll be back for more kids radio show after this. Ready to order from our excellent menu? What? Uh, 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 you are eating with us also? No, this is the waiter, Mr. Invento. He wants to take our order. I think I will have the crab with a shrimp cocktail also, por favor. Very well, madam. And you, sir? Sir, this is uh, very irregular. If you could sip your water more quietly, I believe it would disturb our other guests much less. Mr. Invento, the waiter is trying to talk with you. Uh, while he finishes his water, I will order for him. Just bring him the lobster, por favor. Hmm, very well. Yeah, oh, I was very thirsty. Maybe so, but you should be more quiet when you drink. You will embarrass me. What is that you are holding in your hands there? What is oh, that? this little thing? It is my compact case. I thought I would powder my nose in a moment. Why are you looking into it? Because that is how I see myself. It has a small mirror inside that I can see my reflection in. Let me see that. Caramba! You might have asked me politely before you darted it out of my hands. Look, there he is! He is the one that is causing me so much trouble! Come out of there, you coward! Huh? You are just looking at your own reflection in the mirror. That is you you are looking at. You are an ugly coward as well! Those beady little eyes give you away! I will get my hands on you somehow! Shh! Mr. Invento, you are causing a scene! The other people in here in the restaurant are starting to stare at us. You are not all that ugly. Nein, not me. Him. Him. The one in the mirror. I will smash him. 
looked into the mirror. What did the mirror say? You're the ugliest kid I've seen. Will you please go away? My feelings had been hurt. My pride was damaged. I was crushed. My hair was cold. My clothes are clean. My teeth had all been brushed. Took my father's overcoat and a faded old bow tie. Came back to the mirror to get a new reply. Mirror, mirror on the wall, how do I look to you? Just like that ugly kid. The mirror said as I went through. Looked into the mirror. What did that mirror say? You're the ugliest kid I've seen. Will you please go away? Found my mother's makeup kit and my grandmother's old wig. Dab some lipstick on my mouth and made my chest look big. Put my sister's sweater on and I rolled up both my sleeves. Mirror was so silent, I was so relieved. And finally the mirror spoke and made me feel so glum. It said, You're still weird and ugly. How come? Look into the No matter how I tried, I spent money, time, and energy, and lots of nights I cried. I realized that though it's good to see the way you look, what's important is who you are, that's what I mistook. The best reflection on who you are comes from another place, so I bought a brand new mirror, and got a haircut just in case. What is it, Blueberry? Hoo-hoo, I think I found Mr. Invento's clone. Look through the window of this restaurant. Let me see. Yep, that's him, all right. I could do lieber, and he is sitting at a table with Carmen Gigantica. Oh, yes. Oh, oh, we have to get in there before he does something crazy. <laughs> uh, just the fact that he took Carmen Gigantica to dinner at an expensive restaurant shows he is not in his right mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's rather nice of him, Mr. Invento. What? Oh, she will run up a bill that you won't believe. <laughs> I know. And he has mine credit cards with him in a notebook. Quick, let's get inside and unzip it them right now. Sir, I, if you continue to crash mirrors and make a disturbance, I'll have to ask you to leave. Oh, uh, waiter, waiter. Uh, oh, I am uh, terribly sorry if my twin brother here has caused you any inconvenience. Yeah, uh, we just need to talk with him for a little while. Uh, I promise he will cause you no more trouble. Uh, yes, he's rather new to some of these things. Oh, well, very well. See that things stay quiet. Oh, we will, sir. Thank you. Hey, say, this is a pretty posh place. I bet a meal here costs a pretty penny. I, I don't understand. I am looking at two Mr. Invintos. He never told me he had a twin brother. Don't call this imposter my brother. What? You are, you are fun to be talking. Mine own clone causing a public zine in here. Oh, your clone? You think I belong to you? Oh, well, I am the one who created you. What? Oh, and you are also the one who accelerated me into being this age. Uh, I had no childhood. Now, wait a minute, you two. Just wait a minute. Let's get to the bottom of this once and for all. Schnitzel the clone seems to have a lot of resentment towards you, Mr. Invento. I don't want to talk about it. It is like arguing with myself. You see... He thinks everything is in terms of himself. I That's what am I mean. muy confused. Which is the real Mr. Invento? I am. This is just my clone sitting here next to you. His name is Schnitzel. I have read Mr. Invento's notebook here. What would you all think about a man who plans to use his own clone as nothing more than a bunch of spare parts for himself? What? 
spare parts. You've got your eyes in your head. Can you roll them all around? Roll them all around. Roll them all around. You got your ears on your head. Can you wiggle them around? Wiggle them around. Wiggle them around. You got your nose on your face. Can you wiggle? Mr. Invinto, is that true? You are going to use Schnitzel here for spare parts? Well, uh, I, uh, 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 I was concerned about the future, you see. Uh, what if I needed an extra liver or kidney or heart for a transplant? Yeah, uh, I, I would have mine own warehouse of extra parts, you see. But <laughs> Schnitzel here is a person, not just a clone. <laughs> no wonder he's been so angry. You make him sound like a prefab that you can pull parts off of any time you want. Yeah, well, I am tired of living in the laboratory. I want mine own place to live. And I want to go to school to learn. And I want mine own friends, yes. too. Yes, and I think you owe Schnitzel an apology for how you treat him up to now. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I never really intended to do anything to Schnitzel, not really. Uh, you, are, you are free to leave. But before you go, could you promise me that if I ever need a spare liver or something, you, you know, you could consider helping me out? Mr. Invento. You are my creator, Mr. Invento. All you needed to do was ask. I, I want to help people. It is just that you never considered letting me make up my own mind. Yeah, yeah, for that I am sorry. Uh, please forgive me. Well, now that's better, Mr. Invento. Schnitzel here is a very special person. He's learning already. Come on, let's all go for a walk in the park. 
There are probably a lot of things in the city that Schnitzel has never seen. Yeah, that sounds nice. Uh, you all should take Schnitzel outside, and I will join you in a moment. Uh, I just want to finish my bottle here. Okay, so but hurry up. Hurry up. Hey, Schnitzel, uh, have you ever been to a zoo? Uh, you wouldn't believe all the weird animals and stuff that you'll see in there. Uh, your check, sir. I trust you had a good meal. But, uh, no, uh, I didn't eat all of this, see? It, it, it's not me. It, it was that other guy, Unt Carmen, you know. Uh, sir, uh, we will take credit cards, of course. Oh, uh, uh yeah, uh, uh, very well. Uh, I, I suppose I owe Schnitzel at least one good meal. <laughs> I have my credit... Oh, no! Uh, oh, oh, Schnitzel still has my notebook with all my credit cards in it. <laughs> well, uh, so you see, uh, I cannot pay for this, uh, no. Uh, if that's the way you want it, sir. Oh, Marlin, we seem to have a deadbeat here. Oh, oh, oh wait, wait a minute! Uh, you have the wrong man! Uh, I am not him! Uh, I mean, uh, it was not me! I am not him! Oh, 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 oh.
return for the conclusion of Kids Radio Show in a moment. I saw Mr. Invento later. He was complaining of dishpan hands. It seems that he had to wash dishes in the restaurant to pay for Carmen and Schnitzel's meals. A-I-D-S, All Kids Radio Show episodes are written by Kel Pickens and co-produced by Carolyn Meyer and Kel Pickens. Till next week, bye!